Now that's what I call a blast from the past. Pokemon Ranger, I choose you! What's up, Mighty Boys and Girls? It's your Ranger Boy here, and welcome to another review of the Pokemon XY anime. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Pokemon XY anime? What about Journeys? Well, my dear boys and girls, since Journeys is on a break right now, I thought to myself that this is the perfect time to relieve some good old memories. I'm gonna take you back to the past, to a poker season that didn't suck ass. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. I love me some Journeys. But in all seriousness, I just rewatched the first episode of Pokemon XY, and I was absolutely mind blown of how much this first episode alone still is holding up in today's standards. And in regards of so many aspects, despite being nearly eight years old, like, what the hell? So if you want to know exactly what I'm talking about, if you want to know my opinion, and if you want to have a little ride down memory lane, then grab some popcorn, grab some cookies, and let's do this! We start off with a rather brand new Pokemon about to finish her cooking while also being a little bit annoyed since her daughter called Serena just won't wake up. So her fledgling, aka one of the brand new Gen 6 Pokemon, is about to give the new Pokegirl a rather rude awakening. And with the introduction of fledgling, the anime not only introduces one of the many new Gen 6 Pokemon, but they also introduce a brand new animation technique into the franchise, the 3D camera. And oh my god, looking at that really felt like I was some sort of flying type Pokemon who closely followed this little fella. So in short, I imagine myself being a Snorlax. Gladly, I wasn't an actual Snorlax who entered the room of his lady, or else she would probably not be alive to tell the tale. But even a quick peck from this little guy was enough to disturb her dreams. And also the Matrix if we go with this Rhyhorn's face. And thanks to that, Serena is now fully awake. So her day really didn't start off good, and even got a little bit worse with her mom telling her to prepare herself for her morning training. I wonder what kind of training they are actually talking about. Hmm. But even with this rather annoying start of the day, she opens up the window, breathes some fresh air, and looks forward to an hopefully exciting day. We follow up with another 3D camera movement of the whole landscape while the narrator explains the Pokemon world and the coexistence between humans and Pokemon. But even with all these exciting new things being introduced into this fresh new generation, in my opinion it's always nice to see a familiar face, and I'm happy to say that it's our boy Ash. But at the same time, it's not really our boy Ash. Because when I saw him talking with Alexa on that plane about him being excited for the Kalos region, uh, there was a thought creeping into my mind. At first it was confusion, which then turned into a mind-blowing realization that I never even thought of before. Why is Ash so good looking? Why is he so sexy? Is it actually legal to be this sexy? Even in the title card, which surprisingly is also well animated and features the humans rather than the Pokemon, even there he looks sexy. What? Oh, oh wow, okay. And my confusion about XY Ash's sexiness further increased even more after he stepped out of the plane. And that shot right there, with him touching his cap combined with the sunlight and the shading. I don't speak for everybody, and I certainly don't speak for the ladies, but I can imagine that some girls started to have a crush on that guy after seeing him like this. I can imagine at least one girl for certain, haha. <laughs> So our forever 10 year old boy breathes some fresh colors air, slips down the stairs because he got excited about a brand new Pokemon he never seen before, Vintage Ash, and even good old Team Rocket thinks so. And after that rather rough start, he can't wait to challenge Alexa's sister in her gym, which sadly is not in Lumios, which disappoints our hero. But no need to worry, while Alexa tries to contact her sister, nothing really happened in between. You know, well. Besides, uh, the debut of Mega Evolution, with a badass Pokemon jumping over Ash and then suddenly disappearing in a mysterious yet badass kind of way. Which made both myself and Ash fanboy like crazy! Totally pumped by this encounter, our hero can't wait to tell Alexa all about it, while also using that energy for his upcoming gym battle. Which sadly won't take place, because Alexa's sister seems to be occupied with something else. Really not a good start for our ambitious boy. But I guess as some sort of compensation, Alexa suggests to Ash to challenge a Lumius gym instead. And without even a second wasted, our forever 10 year old boy runs towards his next challenge, encounters numerous new and familiar Pokemon on his way, until he arrives at the Lumius gym. While while some new characters seem to have an eye on our boy. Unfortunately, thanks to him having no gym badges at all, even though you need four to challenge the gym, the Lumius gym itself doesn't seem to welcome Ash with open arms and a warm welcome, but instead straight up tries to murder our hero before kicking him out of the gym. Seemingly in danger, the already mentioned new characters, later revealed as Clement and Barney, save both Ash and Pikachu. Hooray! And as a sign of gratitude, they get shocked by Pikachu. Oh, Pikachu. The female protagonist isn't even there yet. Wait, hold on. He never shocked Serena. Not one. 
Hmm, Pikachu sipping for Serena. By the way, Mysterious Ninja Frog is watching you! Anyway, after some chit-chat about a strange gym and going through the usual introductions, both Ash and Bonnie exchange their jealousies, with Ash being jealous that he doesn't have any kind of siblings. Oh, hey, Ray! While their little sister is jealous of his Pokemon and that she can't wait to finally become a trainer herself. Despite being a bit disappointed by not being able to challenge the Loomis gym, Ash instead wants to challenge Clement and his newly caught Pokemon. The irony! While Ninja Frog is still watching you! So after another new animation trope introduced into the franchise, which is the uniquely animated versus screen, damn that looks nice, we follow up with 2 plus minutes of non-stop back and forth action between Ash's Pikachu and Clement's new Pokemon Bunnelby. And in short, this exchange was intense, with none of the trainers giving their opponents any kind of room for a break. And when I thought that things like the environment and the characters look great, all that looks even better during a battle. And the more the battle goes on, the better Clement seems to understand both Ash and Pikachu. But before we come to a conclusion, we get the usual Team Rocket interruption. Whoa, well, hold on, hold on. Even Team Rocket looks badass in this new animation? And they even look really competent against Ash and Clement? Especially with w Wobbuffet dodging attacks mid-air while countering all of Ash's attacks? Well, goddamn. But the mysterious Pokemon in the shadows couldn't stand it any longer. And so we get Ninja Frog protecting Pikachu. Ninja Frog protecting Pikachu. Ninja Frog protecting Pikachu. Wait a minute. Turns out that this mysterious Pokemon is called Froakie, one of the Kalos starters, who immediately nullifies Wobbuffet's mirror code with his Frobbles. Clement then attacks the villains from beneath the ground, catapulting them into the air, and both Pikachu and Froakie finish them off. Sadly, the episode doesn't end too optimistic, since Froakie collapses from all the taken damage, and without any hesitation, our heroes are on their way to this region's professor, aka Professor Sycamore. So this was my kinda retrospective of this very first XY episode, so let's talk a little bit more in detail about it. Okay, first of all, let us all remember that this very first introduction into the Gen 6 anime was nearly 8 years ago. But quite frankly, you wouldn't even know that it's nearly a decade ago, since this episode and all the new things introduced into the franchise still hold up till this day. And even till this day, I see a lot, and I mean a lot of people craving for this old style of XY to make a return. And to be honest, I can't really blame them. Sure, Sun and Moon and Pokemon Journeys have some great animations themselves that they can boast about, but they never really could recreate this overall vibe of seriousness and downright badassery that the XY art style had. Furthermore, by re-watching this episode, I found more appreciation to the things that XY did innovate and introduce, like for example the 3D camera which lets us immerse more into the overall environment, the title card which is probably one of the few times it wasn't just a generic map or the Pokemon, but instead it actually concentrated on the human characters themselves and how it changes all the time depending on who is the focus of this episode. And later even giving the likes of Team Rocket, Pikachu and even temporary characters like Corinna some spotlight, further emphasizing on the importance of the characters. The versus screen, as minuscule as it seemed at first also was a great new technique because as we see later on in the series, the animators get more and more creative with it by expressing their own creativity with it. And it not only is great to look at, but every time the versus screen appears, it gets the viewers pumped like the anime is directly saying to your face, shit is going down right now. And then of course we arrive at the battling scenes themselves and it basically just combines smooth movements, the art style and the 3D camera to something that many in the fanbase still regard as their favorite animation style and many of Ash's greatest battles were in XY and one major factor why was because of this animation. But enough about the animation, let's talk about the content of this episode. In hindsight, it is unbelievable how much they crammed into just this first episode. The introduction of Serena and hinting on her training with her mom, which later on would be a major conflict throughout her career. The very last time we saw Ash actually challenging for a Pokemon gym after entering a new region, which you know, both Sun and Moon and Pokemon Journeys don't do. Which is especially sad in Pokemon Journeys case, since the Gala gym leaders are one of my favorite gym leaders of all time, thanks to their vast amount of personalities and charisma. It's really a shame. Then we had the introduction of Barney and Clement, by establishing the younger sibling as the super Pokemon lover, and sometimes she really overdoes her love, but she means it well, and I just love how much enthusiasm she shows towards both Ash as a trainer and just Pokemon in general. On the other side of the coin, we have Clement, who at first seems to be a little bit geeky, but from day one they establish him as a very competent trainer who can even keep up with an already established trainer like Ash, and by displaying not 
not only his batting skills but also his battle IQ, they make it very clear that he seems to be very experienced. Thanks to the games, we all knew even back then that both were connected with the Lumius gym. But it's nice to see his status as a gym leader being justified with his overall display of skills. Last but not least, the introduction of Froki, and even back then, he had the sense of protecting somebody while also looking really cool in the process. But I honestly just really like how they showcased Froki with him hiding in the shadows while constantly watching over our boy Ash, which not only suits his overall theme as a ninja Pokemon, but also he shows a lot of interest towards Ash right from the get go, and how their relationship ended, well, is something we all know all too well. Honestly, I really had a blast watching the first episode of XY, and till this day, it is probably one, if not, my favorite first episode of all time. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this a little trip down memory lane. What is your opinion on the very first episode of XY, and tell me your first experience with the XY anime. And just like always, I see you guys in the comments down below. Bye guys!